Hello, and welcome to the presentation, Challenges and Liquid Biopsies. My name is Dr. Mike Prus. I'm Senior Field Application Scientist from Personalis. The less invasive liquid biopsy methodology enables many clinical applications, including screening, early detection of mutations for therapy selection, disease prognosis, and drug response and resistance mutation detection, as well as monitoring. The ability to perform serial blood sampling provides a unique mechanism to monitor the cause of disease without having to obtain tissue biopsies at frequent intervals. As simple and less invasive the liquid biopsy sample generation is, we should always keep in mind there are challenges attached to this kind of samples. The circulating tumor DNA is part of the cell-free DNA. The quality assessment of CFDNA is a prerequisition for the success of downstream analysis. Therefore, a complete understanding of the plasma sample and the CFDNA composition is the foundation for a correct assessment. This slide illustrates the complexity of the component makeup. The CFDNA may contain, beside the inquired CTDNA in different amounts, for example, white blood cell contaminations and or long DNA fragments, which have been generated by apoptotic or necrotic processes. The correct quantification is important and overestimation of input material might cause problems in downstream analysis like DNA extraction yields or library preparation procedures. Beside the challenges of quality and quantity on the input side, the tumor itself might be a source of greater variabilities and imponderability. Not all tumor types shed the same amount of ctDNA into the bloodstream. It is known in the literature, as shown here in this publication from Science Translation Medicine, that some tumors at late stage, like ovarian or breast cancer, shed more ctDNA than, for example, gliomas or renal cell carcinomas. And as indicated with the error bars, the variability with one particular tumor type can vary a lot. Beyond the tumor type, other factors may add another dimension of the predictability or maybe unpredictability on the ctDNA content in the bloodstream. The subtype and the tumor grade may play an important role as well. On this slide, the different subtypes on the left side and grades on the right side of cancers of the brain are shown. For example, in glioblastoma, more ctDNA alterations can be detected in blood as an astrocytoma, whereas the ctDNA detection rate increases with the tumor evolution, as indicated on the right side. Late-stage tumors shed more ctDNA in the bloodstream than early stages. That is common in most of the tumors. As we have discussed now the challenges in DNA input material and the influence of the tumor type, subtype and grade in the ctDNA amount, I would like to highlight the third challenge in liquid biopsies. The amount of ctDNA in a given plasma sample can be a challenge as well. This data is from the seracare.com page. It illustrates how much DNA and how many DNA copies are in a given blood or plasma sample available. The calculation is indicated below the table. If we take a standard blood or plasma sample, we may extract, depending on the extraction method, approximately 10 nanogram ctDNA, which represents approximately 3,000 copies of DNA. If one marker is available with an allele frequency of 1%, we have approximately 30 copies left with this particular marker. The challenge here is to go lower. If one marker is available with an allele frequency of 0.1%, we have approximately three copies left with this particular marker. The sensitivity of a technology, for example, at 0.01% becomes then obsolete at one point as you are trying to detect below one molecule. This can be bypassed by increasing the input amount. As this data table is a good theoretical overview, we may go back to lab reality. At Personalis, we do recommend a minimum of two tubes of blood, and with our CFDNA extraction method, we may generate up to 50 nanogram of DNA, which we will apply on our next liquid biopsy platform. Our comprehensive quantification procedure and quality assessment of your input material will place the foundation of your study success. 
This new platform is an exceptionally good product, broad and comprehensive in detecting, for example, SNVs and indels, and an excellent complement to our ImmunoID Next platform. We achieve high performance exon wide, and it starts with both our footprint and the depth of sequencing. First, the 75 megabase exon footprint was constructed using our ACE technology to fill gaps otherwise left by sequencing piles. This ensures that no stone is left unturned across the entire exon. Additionally, the footprint includes a high concentration of capture probes across 247 cancer-related genes within the boosted region. Based on the amount of sequencing focused on each sample, we typically achieve roughly 2,000x depth across the entire exome and roughly 5,000x in the boosted region on average. This depth is extraordinarily high for exome sequencing and coupled with our bioinformatic approaches, yields extremely high performance and that is far beyond what is reported in literature. Precision and personalized medicine will benefit greatly when analytical and clinical challenges affecting circulating biomarker development are addressed. While it might take a longer time before clinical validity and utility are demonstrated for early detection, liquid biopsy biomarkers are becoming crucial for patient stratification and therapy response prediction. Liquid biopsy will play an increasingly important role in personalized cancer patient management in the future. Hopefully, this quick introduction to liquid biopsy provided you with the basic information and why they become more and more important in the field of clinical oncology as a great complementary technology for the traditional approaches. Thank you very much and have a great day.